Hello, this is Dread, and in today's video topic, we are going to be talking about the first Rune Master build I've ever played, Ignite Glyph of Dominion. I think by far this is one of the best Ignite builds in the game currently, thanks to the insane synergy between Glyph of Dominion and, of course, Ignite. So we're just going to hop right into how this build works. So Ignite Glyph of Dominion, it has a node inside of it that makes your Ignites applied by Glyph of Dominion have increased frequency based on your Ignite chance. So for instance, normally Ignite Glyph of Dominion only applies six Ignites per second, right? But this is improved by your Ignite chance percentage one to one. So for instance, if you have 100% chance to ignite on your gear, you will apply 12 ignites per second. And then of course, as you keep going on, you can apply a ridiculous amount of ignites per second. And this scales really hard. Glyph of Dominion also has a lot of scaling for damage as it is a really good skill. And overall, it's great. We're also abusing things like, of course, Transcriber's Graver. Essentially what this does is it makes it our Fire Aura area turned into Glyph of Dominion area. That's why our area on our Glyph of Dominion is so big. And this is actually our best in slot weapon because of that 20% Ellie pen roll. Now, of course, you could use a, um, a Firestarter's Torch instead. Either, I believe, work, but you do have to make sure you're applying spreading flames to the boss to make Firestarter's Torch work. And this build doesn't really hit that often at all, to be honest. So... It's not really worth using. So Transcriber's Graver is your best in slot. So uh, there's some other things that this build does. There is uh, a node inside Glyph of Dominion that makes Glyph of Dominion have a cooldown, but it consumes your raw runes. So you cast three raw runes and it gets 30% increased area and 30% more damage per raw rune. And that is really strong for essentially doubling your damage, right? But the problem is, uh, it puts it on a 20 second cooldown, but thankfully there is a note after it that refreshes your charges for, you know, of course, for Glyph of Dominion, if you cast your Runic Invocation. Now, my current Runic Invocation, it's mainly for utility and for movement. There are really good Runic Invocation builds, like for instance, there's the Octahedron build, like there are plenty of really good Runic Invocation builds, but Runic Invocation also works really well as just a random teleport skill because it has a lot of good buffs in it. You can abuse the runes on your stuff. There's a lot of different ways of using Runic Invocation. It is very much so a kind of like a, uh, you know, a Swiss army knife of skills, which is great. Uh, other things that we're doing, we're also applying conflagrate to enemies with our enchant weapon. Essentially what this does is it consumes our all of our ignites on nearby enemies and then makes those ignites deal 200% more damage. So essentially pops your ignites and makes them deal more damage. Uh, right now I'm getting to like 3 million pops of Ignite on the dummy with the full combo, and it's going absolutely wonderful. The damage is great. I think I'm getting to like 300 to 400k ticks with full combo, something like that with my Ignite. And my gear, I'll be honest, is close. It's like okay, but it's not the best, but it's okay. So overall, I'm enjoying the build. One thing though I want to talk about is defense. So for defense, as you can tell, I am stacking a decent bit of life. Well, Dread, life on mage is pretty bad for the most part. Yeah, normally it is, but thanks to a node called Rune Word Her Hurricane, on 100% chance on cold spell cast, we gain the buff for six seconds. And what this does essentially is it gives us a buff that makes it so that when enemies have ignite stacks on them, they treat our endurance threshold whenever they hit us as higher per ignite stack. So for instance, right, uh, if we have like 100 ignite stacks on the enemy, we would have an extra 200 endurance threshold flat on the enemy. And this is really good for a lot of different rune master builds, even non ignite ones, as we can get a lot of ignites on the enemy turns out with a very easy means on this build, we get around like 300 ignites. So that's like 600 extra threshold for us for free. And that doubles our threshold and makes us Pretty surprisingly tanky. Right now on my gear, my armor isn't very good, uh, but eventually when you get proper gear, unlike me, you can invest into some armor and all of that combined will make you a very, very tanky boy. But with all that being said, let's go in game and talk about stuff. All right, here we are in game with the character. We're going to give an in-depth look at all the skills, the gearing and everything. 
and I'm going to give you my opinions on what you should do moving forward after you get to the same gear state that I'm in. So for skills, let's talk about it real quick. This build, um, it does not require plus three levels. I just want to let you know that right now. I have plus three levels, but this skill scales really hard off of plus levels because you have more damage here, more damage here, and more damage here. So if we had a way to get extra levels, that would be absolutely wonderful, but it is nowhere near mandatory. We also don't need, of course, uh, you know, the plus three. It's just you take two nodes out of this and one node out of this. You deal most of the same amount of damage that I'm currently doing right now, but eventually you do want to get that plus two or that plus three Glyph of Dominion. Eventually plus four, right? You can use an Omni. There's a lot of different options. But for Glyph of Dominion, we take one point travel into Shock and Grasp, one point to Flaming Scroll. This turns your Shock Chance into Ignite as well. So if you're standing in your Glyph, you actually get 20% extra Ignite Chance, which is cool. Three points into Burning Simple. So we're doing six Ignites per second, which is cool. Then one node into Fan the Inferno. The Ignite Frequency from Burning Symbols increased by your chance to Ignite. Now this specifically, I just want to point out, works with Ignite Chance on Hit with Fire Skills. It works for everything, right? So this works. It works for everything, right? Any kind of Ignite Chance, which is great. Uh, specific As long as it's for a Fire Skill, right? Or it can be used for a Fire Skill. So stuff like Soul Fire would work. Calamity would work. So there's a lot of uniques that would be very strong for this build that I currently don't have, which is very amazing considering how much damage I'm already pumping out. Now, then we take two points travel to Herald of Domination, three points travel into Astro Mage, then one point into Astral Extension. This gives it so that we can place two glyphs down at the same time. And of course they overlap as you may well know, which is great. So that's cool. Also as well, we take three points into Vaporizing Realm. Eventually we want five points so we get enough plus levels. Then three points eventually with wreak havoc as well. This is really strong as it just gives us a lot of more damage and it benefits us for scaling, uh, you know, duration on our Glyph of Dominion, which is the next node. We take three points into Doom Scribe. The main reason why we want this is because normally if you just place it down, it'll like get big and then explode. But Doom Scribe makes it so it lasts a few seconds in the bigger form. And that makes our clear significantly better. So Doom Scribe is like one of the best nodes currently in its tree. Then one point in the Rune of Dominance. You want to be grabbing all three of these nodes real quick, by the way. You don't want to be like, uh, you don't want to grab it like one at a time. You want to grab them all at once. And then, of course, Power Devastation. This makes it so you consume your runes. Right now, what you can do here, uh, you do red, uh, red, and then I'll do cold, right? So cold would be my first one, right? But then as I cast glyph, it actually casts a fire glyph for me and then consumes three fire glyphs. So you only need to have something like this and you'll always get the three fire glyphs, which is great. And it is a lot of more damage, a lot of extra area. This is only mainly needed for single target for clearing regular monos. This is not necessary to do the whole combo. And of course, the whole thing that makes it work is perfect design. Gives us an additional charge since we can, you know, of course, cast two on the ground. We can also refresh it on use of Runic Invocation here, which I've turned into a teleport, which we'll talk about in a second. So as you can tell, I gain it back and as a cooldown. And boop, we get them back. Cool, right? Now, of course, let's talk about Runic Invocation. So we take four points into Transcriber of Power for that cast speed buff. We really like cast speed on this build. Makes it feel great. One point to Enigma for the movement skill, then four points in Adept Rune Scribing, then one point to Consolidator. So this is all to make it as low as cooldown as possible here. We're at 3.8. But as you can tell, when I have three runes, so I cast like three times, it also increases the cooldown as well, which is cool on this one. Yep. Then we take two points travel to Attuned Approach, but the mana refund is great because mana is great. Like having zero mana is great. Like well, no mana, anyways. Then three points into Rune Slinger. We like that because it's just cast speed for Rune Convocation, so we go faster. Then five points of Elemental Call. This is really strong in monos because I'm literally going in monoliths. I'm just going to do this and then Rune Convocation, and that's going to make it bigger for you, which is really cool because it's a non channeled skill. So we just get a lot of extra area for free, which is really cool. Then for Rune Bolt, Rune Bolt solves, sol like, is a few different reasons to use it. The main one is to use it on the mana gain chance here so that we can sustain all our skills. 
and we grab five points to arcane overcharge then one node into uh, supercharge bolt so we actually double the projectile chance right which is really cool yeah we get two extra projectiles so if we like sit inside the glyph we get a lot of extra projectiles which is cool right obviously then one point into runic evocation so that we get the extra projectiles and a cone and the auto targets so they always hit three points into two in recovery we get a little bit of mana from it and a little bit of life from it when we change uh you know when it changes then four points at arcanus for the cast speed of course one point travel to pyromantic bolt then one point into blazing flare this is to turn off the lightning rune because we do want the cold rune from this specifically we want the cold rune because of this node a rune word avalanche so we can make sure we proc it otherwise we wouldn't need a cold rune and of course like i showed you earlier it doesn't matter because it overrides the last cold rune and gives you a raw rune that then consumes them which is a really cool design by the way thank you ehg for that so yeah overall rune bolts really good then for flame ward stereotypical flame ward setup you're not really going to get much different it's the same setup that everyone else uses not really too much different there then for enchant weapon, we're mainly using this for conflagrate. So essentially we take the ignite duration here, which is great, obviously. And then the node here, conflagrate, activating enchant weapon consumes all ignite stacks on nearby enemies, causing their damage to be dealt instantly. Now, of course, this is like, okay, uh, we actually normally wouldn't want our ignites to be, you know, consumed instantly, right? But then this node here, Syrian conflagration, Ignites consumed by conflagrate deals significantly more damage. So it deals like 200% more damage, which almost triples our damage. We can get to like a 3 million pop on the dummy. It's really fun. I love it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for skills. Now let's talk about passives here. This is my mage passives. The main thing we care about is just eventually dulling out this, but the rest of it doesn't really matter. The cast speed's cool though, which is cool. cool. But the rest of it doesn't matter too much. You could invest into this ward stuff, but I just didn't feel like I needed it. Then for Spellblade here, we put 18 points. This is mainly to get access to Enchant Weapon and also get the res and the damage. And then of course, get the Incinerating Aura. This increased area is very strong because Transcribers, Transcribers Graver here, it gives increased area with our Glyph of Dominion. So as you can tell, it's a puny one. And then that makes it a big chonker, right? So we definitely want that increased area from uh, the passive tree here. And of course, enchant weapon. Then for Rune Master, we take one point travel here, one point travel here, grab the eight points in Transcendence, mainly just for the life. We want as much life as possible on this setup. Eight points here for the life and the less damage taken. Ten, for, 10 points here for the Ignite Chance, which is great. Eight points here for the uh, more damage against bosses and stuff. Uh, six points here for the Ellie Pen. Eight points here for the life. Eight points here for the endurance percentage and extra endurance threshold. Then five points to ruin an avalanche. Eventually, with more points, I would put more points into low grocracy to make your rune word buffs actually last longer. Because as you can tell, I only cast my rune bolt every so often, the cold one. So you want to like actually increase the duration of this buff, which is great. Now people are gonna ask me. Dread, why aren't you running orders opposite uh, in position? Uh, the main reason I'm not running this is because the way to get a brand is through branded deception here, which I have to lightning skills that cost at least 15 mana apply branded deception on hit. I don't have anything like that currently, so that wouldn't work for me at all. Now, of course, what we could do is like use the frost wall node or flame rush. You could probably do that. I just don't feel like doing it because it would require me to change my build significantly just to shove in like a little bit more damage, which is really not worth it in my opinion for quality of life, right? Now let's talk about blessings real quick. Uh, of course, Ignite Chance is great here for Mariah. We don't really care what comes from this one. We cool down uh, Critical Strike Avoidance. Eventually we would be getting a pair of the Ignite Boots, the the dragon, the fiery dragon shoes, which would give you less damage from crits. This would allow you to dump this blessing specifically, and then you could actually turn this into all res or something like that beneficial, and that would be cool. This note here, eventually, when we get better stuff on our gear, right? When we get better endurance percent on our gear, a roll here, a roll there, something like that, we could turn this into flat armor, and then this could save percent armor, 
and that would give us a decent amount of armor. We actually don't have that much right now, but that would give us a decent chunk of armor once we actually have endurance on gear. Once, you know, my build doesn't have terrible gear, right? That's it for blessings. Now for items here. Uh, we have on the helmet, ignite chance with fire skills and health health. The plus to rune bolt is cool, but you don't technically need it. Uh, this is not the right base that we'd want. We actually want like a calamity, uh, the fire calamity, the 150% chance to ignite with skills. This on top of that other ignite chance would be really cool. Those have really low LP score, so you can very easily get a three LP calamity and slam something like this on it and benefit from it heavily. Uh, for Amulet here, we're running a Bleeding Heart with some Dot and some Life. You must be wondering, Dread, aren't you inflicted with Bleed? Uh, it, yes, but it doesn't matter. The Bleeds like do like 8 tick per second. Like Our ward literally sustains the Bleed we take. And we don't even cast that many spells constantly. So the Bleed doesn't matter at all. And of course, we get a lot of Leech from this. This is our main source of sustain. The way that we sustain our large HP pool currently. Uh, there are a few other ways of doing this. If you want to do this as leveling and playing as it, I would heavily suggest running the gloves, the Ellie Leech gloves from the Urza's library quest, Avarice, right? 3% Ellie res, uh, Ellie damage leech, or you could use the relic that gives you 2% Ellie leech. Either way, doesn't matter. And of course, HP is great. This weapon, Transcriber's Graver, essentially we were using it to get the area on our Glyph of Dominion, but you could go for a much more weapon, like much more damage oriented weapon. I just like the area, but this is technically best in slot thanks to that Ellie pen roll. We want as much Ellie pen as possible on an ignite build. And of course that ignite on hit is really strong. I managed to hit that, which is cool. Test here, same idea as the helmet, life, uh, life, ignite, fire damage over time. The base is terrible. We would rather have the armor base, which would be great eventually. Then shield here just a shield with like life like a generic shield we don't really need like a crazy shield uh we just want generic as possible just tank some damage eventually we could upgrade into like a unique shield and put that in there like maybe a cradle would be great there's a lot of different things you could do with the shield slot essentially the rings here are kind of identical just dot le dot res hp dot le dot res hp eventually right ruby rings would be best or i'll be honest i i would really love a pair of silver rings right now to be honest then for the belt here we just care about the life life le dot and fire damage eventually we want cleanse i don't have cleanse on pot which is sad but it's whatever then of course atrophies we can farm this for lp get some damage over time on it get the armor applies to dot dgen eventually with the experimental affix there's a lot of different things you can get on an atrophy that'd be great boots here we just want the uh we want the uh fiery dragon shoes so just use whatever boots you want to use until you get fiery dragon shoes as those are your best in slot and then for our relic we go with the plus levels to go with dominion le damage over time res and life and this could be a better base obviously and of course we could use a soul fire eventually if you can land plus levels to go for dominion i would heavily suggest sticking with the plus levels to go for dominion first and then swapping to the soul fire if you can like land the glyph of dominion level on the soul fire it'd be fine but i think i'll be honest soul fire kind of got nerfed so it's not really worth using over using a relic like this now of course we're using a throne of ambition more fire damage, make sure you're hitting the boss enough to get the more fire damage, more armor. Then we want ignite duration on this idol, and then eventually everything else would be increased damage. But don't be afraid to fill everything out with res like I did, because I'm a cheap bastard. But with all that being said, this has been Dread. I have to go do something else. Thank you so much for watching.